Welcome to Roselle Art. Today we are going to make our own rainbow fish scene here where we start with pencil and then we get to use some crayon and watercolor to create a wax resist effect. Um, this one is my example. My students artwork was much bigger as you can see so they turned out really great. I'll show some examples at the end. Meanwhile, I hope you enjoy my rainbow fish tutorial. Today we are going to be drawing our big rainbow fish. Last time we practiced drawing different kinds of fish, we looked at different shapes the bodies could be, and we looked at different shapes the fins could be and the tail, and maybe some different lines we could use like wavy lines or zigzag lines. And then we looked at the scales and how this bumpy line is really nice at making scales and how when we bumped our line and then made the second line jump off the top of the little mountain of the first line it made some really nice scales so we bump 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 only did maybe three four or five across so not really bitty little little bumps and then top of the mountain the top of the mountain to the top of the mountain and making sure we go off our edge so we practiced that last time and now we get to do our big one now you guys have a bit bigger paper than I do um, so make sure that you fill your space I don't want to see some little bitty bur little bitty uh, fish I want to make some big fish so I'm gonna pick a shape maybe this time I'm gonna do my circle fish Oh yes, that's fun. So I am drawing, I'm not gonna press hard because I don't wanna be able to not erase if I make a mistake. And I'll draw an eye, which is a circle, another circle. I'll draw some lips. I can do the B or three shaped lips where I could do a mouth like that. Maybe I'll do, I'm, I think I'm gonna make this the spiky type of fish. With using a zigzag line. Great! I might even do a little fin in here with my zigzag line. Fabulous, I have my fish. Now, I want to add some scales. So I'm gonna do my bumpy line. One, two, three, four, and a half. Great, if I'm getting more than five, it might be a little bit smaller than I want. Next row, I'm gonna bump from the mountain top to the top, to the top, to the top, to the top. Notice how I'm keeping them nice and big. Don't get those scales. Okay, I'm gonna go behind my little fin right there. Those scales too small is what I was saying. Here we go, off the edge. Off the edge. Keeping those scales nice and big. All right, now I've got a lot of scales on my fish. Our next step, now if you finish this a little bit early, we could always draw some like seaweed over here. You could do like another little fish. Maybe he has a little baby fish over here. Any other details you think you would like to add? I like to maybe do the bottom of the ocean down here if he's swimming really low. Maybe there's a starfish down there. Maybe there's shells. I wanna see what yours is swimming around. I know some of you were talking about eels. Could draw an eel. All right, your fish. Now, once I'm done with pencil, I love the way my picture's looking, you're gonna get your crayons out. We're gonna start by outlining with some black. Black is just a great crisp color and it really helps shows off whatever other colors we're gonna use. I'm pressing nice and hard because we're going to be painting this and when I paint it I don't want my black to disappear. So 
I'm going to outline my pencil lines, all my pencil lines. All right. Notice sometimes when I'm drawing, I turn my paper. That's a great strategy if it's really hard to like twist your hand around. Just turn your paper while you use your crayon to trace. I've got all of my lines traced with black crayon, and now I'm going to be putting that black to the back in the bucket, and I'm going to pick out some cool colors. So as you remember, our cool colors are green, blue, and purple. So there are different shades of purple, different shades of green, different shades of blue. You can get all those crayons out of here, seeing what we can find in our bucket. Maybe we've got some interesting different ones. Teal, my favorite color. Yeah, so grab some colors, cool colors. Let's put them to the side. And I'm going to start filling in my scales with the cool colors. Just like Marcus Pfister did a lot of cool colors in our angry, uh, uh, just like Marcus Pfister did a lot of cool colors in his rainbow fish, we're gonna do some in ours. So I'm gonna take one color, pressing very hard. I would like you to fill it in. Maybe I would pick a couple different scales with this color. As long as I have this crayon out, I might as well use it a couple different times. But I do not want you to use the color right next to it. That's going to not look as great. So use that one, put it to the side. Use a different color. So now I'm gonna do purple. Maybe I'll fill in a couple different purples. Oh, I like how hard I'm pressing. Let's see if you can tell the difference between when I'm pressing hard and light. Yeah, that doesn't look quite as good. And when I paint over this picture, that's not gonna look purple. It's gonna look like whatever color my paint is. Much better. Now, I've finished my fish. So if you wanted to include one or two warm colors, sometimes Marcus Pfister would use a warm color to make an area pop out. Um, so you might notice that sometimes he does it on his starfish or his fish's lips. So if you want those to pop out, you can. If you want to make um, something else pop out by being the only warm color, that's your choice, but we only want to use a little bit. If we're using a lot of warm colors, then it's not going to pop. It's just gonna look like a bunch of colors together. So make sure you only use a little bit, and I think, mm, I'm gonna be done, that looks great. So I'm going to maybe add a bit more crayon to other areas, like maybe I wanna do my fish and my eel and my seaweed, so I'm gonna do that, and then it's gonna be time to paint. So you'll notice when I use purple on that fish's head, it's really hard to see its eyes now. So that's a good thing to keep in mind if you're gonna be using a dark color, that sometimes it's almost as dark as the black is. I'm gonna put away my crayons, and it's time to, to get out the paint. So I'm gonna take this and trade it out for my paint. I have my brush, I have some water, I have a paper towel as well. With these supplies, um, I'm going to be painting the background of my Rainbow Fish's place. So I'm going to start, of course, with watercolor by getting my brush wet. And, well, what's a good color to choose? I could choose any cool color. I could start with blue, but I think I'm going to be a little creative maybe start with green. Notice when I paint over my rainbow fish, ah, I did a good job on my crayon. Awesome. I'm also using a different brush. I could use this little brush. Oh, make them 
pointy. Gotta make Betty's hair pointy. My little brush is over here, but I'm doing a big space, so I'm using a big brush. I would like to add some blue into this green while it's still wet, so I'm gonna rub my brush on the bottom of my bucket. I'm gonna wipe it on the side, not tapping. And I'm gonna dry it off. Oof, no green in there, so it's a clean brush. Got some blue and I'm gonna mix it. Ooh, I love that. Mixing it in with my green. You can see how it's pushing away. If there's ever a spot that you think it's not pushing away enough, you can always take some paper towel and tap at it. Oh, now it's really going away. Okay. Gonna get some more water if it's feeling dry. Just do blue if you want to. Oh, I've got a better idea. I'm gonna do purple out here. You can just do blue if you want to, but I think it looks so fun to have some other colors mixed in. I just love mixing my paint, so I'm always trying to find places to do that. still wet over here, I want to add some green in again. So I'm rubbing it on the bottom, of course, wiping it on the side, and drying it off. A little bit wet for a little bit more green. We'll put it up here. Now before we're done, let's check to make sure. Do we see any spots that might need a little more paint? Maybe a little bit down very bottom corner. Sometimes I don't even need more paint. I could just do a little, just a little bit more. Sometimes I just need a little bit of brush to move the paint around. I think that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how that looked. Look how I paint over it. Nothing happens because this wax resist where I drew with my crayon and it pushes all the water away. Now it's your turn to make your rainbow fish.